2nd of April. Cycling campaigners are staging a protest in Westminster today over what they describe as the failure of London's councils to improve safety. According to a Freedom of Information inquiry by the group Stop Killing Cyclists, only three London boroughs have installed any segregated cycle lanes since the last council elections in 2010. And during that time... 54 cyclists have been killed on our city's roads. Well, Donica McCarthy is from Stop Killing Cyclists. Good morning to you. Now, when you talk about segregated cycle lanes, do you mean actually uh, just the ones that are painted the blue, for example, or do you mean an actual proper uh, segregated, as in away from the traffic? Yeah, we mean an actual proper segregated cycle lane, as they have in Holland, where... The, the conflict between cyclists and pedestrians and, and trucks are eliminated. Yeah, so essentially it's kind of like a, like a, a real a, one, like a, like a, a ridge or something to exactly. actually sort of put you away. So, in in your opinion, which boroughs have done well? Let's let's go with the least first, and then we'll ask about the most. Yeah, we we've had thirteen boroughs um, built, not a single um, cycle lane ever in their history. 24 boroughs have built none since the last election. Among those are included Southwark, Westminster, Kensington, Chelsea, um, Barking, etc., etc. Um, the only t- we actually did calculate the entire roadwork in London by the boroughs is around 12,000 kilometres, of which only 36 are properly protected. Three boroughs, to be fair to them, have actually implemented all 20 mile per hour zones across their boroughs, and. Um, what we we found, what we feel with the the report shows today is is like London is still stuck in the 1950s. There are cities across the world, whether it's um, Seville, Berlin, Copenhagen, New York, Montreal, are in, are installing segregated cycle lanes, and this is really important because we're not just talking about cyclists here. Since the last local elections. OK, 54 cyclists have died, but 270 pedestrians. And with this pollution that came out today, um, 13,000 people, we calculated, have died from, from heart and lung disease in London. It's one of the problems, though, with the approach that you're taking and your organisation is taking, is that you've mentioned, I think, it was 13 boroughs that have done nothing. Are those boroughs where there were fatalities or are there some outlying boroughs where actually people might cycle with much more safety? And this idea of segregated lanes everywhere could be a bit of a red herring. Um, there are... With the, this, the research shows that um, there are deaths and injuries in, in all of London boroughs. But the deaths are not just the pedestrian and the cyclists. It's actually people from lack of fitness. The research, we, we contacted the University of London. But there's no guarantee with respect to segregated cycle lanes you're going to make me take more exercise and live longer. Um, if you actually did the, stu- the research, we contacted the University of London. In countries that have installed seg- significant amounts of segregated cycle lanes, such as Berlin, such as, um, Denmark and Holland, the fitness rates of the population rises to something like 70 to 80 percent. In London, it's a disgraceful 20 percent. Now, council budgets, of course, as we know, yep. are under considerable pressure. What do you think should be sacrificed to pay for your cycle lanes? Um, we recognise that it is a time of um, of um, financial restraint. We're not asking, asking that extra money should be spent on transport. We are arguing that the money that is spent on that transport should be allocated differently. Less than 1%, in, in some cases almost invisible percent, is spent on cycling. We want 10% of the transport budget from TfL and the London boroughs to be spent on cycling. So what would have cyclones. to go, though, to get you that? So they would stop building new infrastructure for, for, for a period of time and that the um, and the the, the um, for, so, for example, in, in, in TfL's budget, they, have, they are spending £500 million on refurbishing one tube station. That's the equivalent of the spend in, in London for all cycle lanes and cycling provision for the next seven or eight years. However, though, Donica, we have a statement from uh, London councils and they say um, they've recently consulted on bringing in extra cycle safety measures, applying to lorries, and £100 million has been awarded to seven innovative boroughs to enhance cycling facilities. That's a lot of money. Um, the the amazing thing that London boroughs and politicians are now doing in London is they're not telling you how much they're spending. They're telling you how much they're spending over the next 10 years, over the next 20 years, over the next 30 years, which is three or four election cycles. That 100 million works out at around two to 300,000 pounds per borough per year for the next 10 years. Well, there's only seven boroughs getting that extra money. The, and that's all that's being spent by, the, by TfL on London councils for the next te- decade. So in 10 years' time, London will, all, will still be farther behind Holland and Denmark than they are currently. We need to up the money being spent. We've said this to you before, um, and have you responded to it before? I have to put it to you. Are we really comparing like with like when we compare Holland and Denmark with London? Um, New York, 
Montreal, Seville. You keep mentioning Berlin. Holland and Denmark. Then, Berlin. I, no, I said, hang on. I said Montreal. Just I said now. New York. Yeah. I said now. Seville. I said Berlin. Berlin, you said earlier. Yeah, so Holland I, what, and Denmark. So, we're not comparing like we like, are we? So, um, I, what I am saying is that cities in every single major developed country are doing this. We, we, we quote Holland and Denmark because they've been doing it for 40 years. So they're really ahead of us. They've put in the infrastructure and it's worked. And what I'm saying to you is, yes, and can we catch up? That. Can we catch up? Yes, we can, definitely. Why is Britain, why should Britain be different from anybody else? We only need the politicians to start committing it and start investing in it. And then we can get there, I assure you. Donica McCarthy, thank you very much. Donica is from Stop Killing Cyclists. Now,